we will call this a quickie before as the carpet is about to go bye bye and we'll be back in a few weeks with later or after carpet all gone Padding all gone, nails all gone, staples rather, and carpet tech all gone. Two coats of primer. And we are ready for paint. First coat of the color coat. So still a little bleed up top. Hopefully the color coat will catch that. And we're good. Time will tell. Okay, first coat of Sunset Nude. So you can see the contrast, get a little closer, between the white of the ceiling. So that gives you a better perspective of what the color was because the primer was white. But in terms of bleed and uh, elimination of red, the uh, primer was the way to go. Otherwise we would have been, we'll probably do a second coat just for thoroughness. And because we have so much paint, this used like a third of a gallon. Uh, so we will ensure a nice solid coat of paint. But yeah, for uh, coat number one of the color, came out really nice. It's a pretty color. Again, here's the good contrast of uh, ceiling color coat and wood. And there'll be a quarter inch round that goes back right in there to give that a crisp line. Okay, now we have second coat done. Tinkering with the floor a little bit. No bleed, came out really nice. Any shadows right now are from the sun slash fan turning objects still in. So we've started to tinker with the floor layout. ultimately what it will look like when it's finished. The red is gone. No more red. Long live the sunset node. Okay. 
looking good. Last night's work. I don't know if I'll reshoot this one. The sun is a little <clears throat> higher and the room is more illuminated, but I like the natural light in the morning to show the progress. We're about halfway done. No rush, focusing on making sure we don't have too many lines right next to each other. Like something like this, I don't like. So that'll get redone, but uh, here's a good example of trying to make them seem as random as possible and avoid a pattern. Yesterday was spent primarily on the door, cutting the door frame to allow me to slide the piece underneath the door frame so it has a really clean look. the threshold that will be staining to look like maple cognac. All my measurements. It's coming out nice. If I don't trip.
All right, Friday night was a busy, busy night. I needed lots of tea. Getting down to the last of the interesting cuts. About uh, two thirds of the way done. So many of these big boards. Holy shit. They didn't give you too many. They gave uh, like four of these big boards per package. And then like one or two of the what I call small, medium, and medium two, and then you've got medium three, but just a shit ton of these huge 83 inch planks, which I guess are great if you're doing a very large space, but they don't look good in a small space when you're trying to uh, break the lines up. So this will go now that it's the weekend, probably fast, finish it, and then start working on the baseboards, and cutting and priming, painting new baseboards, and then repainting old baseboards, trimming based on new sizes of whatever. And then I started on this. So this is sized for the threshold, but now I've started to play with stains there's actually three colors here uh, one all the way on the left and then in the middle i started experimenting with two different stains uh, they both have the same base and then the top stain is a different stain trying to match or come close and it looks like this one is pretty good i mean when you look at the characters of the wood uh, i would say but it also depends on what piece. So if you take this and put it right here. Let me go on the other side. Yeah, I'm thinking that, uh, that middle one. At least right now. We'll experiment some more. That's a side, uh, side project. But not paying 90 bucks for a threshold piece. An eight foot threshold piece that I need uh, 30 inches on. But uh, I like video in the morning because the way the sun hits it, it just looks uh, really nice. Has a nice uh, warm bounce. But let me draw the shade so it. It just has a nice warm feeling to it. It's a good choice. And putting all the face plates back on, finding where original construction wasn't so wonderful. Coming along. It'll be a good weekend. All right, so this is going to be using some general finish red sienna as the base finished off or topped off with red mahogany stuff all in the garage against the uh i think this is oak unfinished oak so we'll see what that looks like all right that's what uh, a one and only coat uh, i'll call this a base coat of red sienna and that's kind of what it looks like You'd call it a stain. I wouldn't call it a stain. It's, this is more glazing effect. And I was thinking that uh, after I shoot it with the red mahogany or apply the red mahogany, I might do some uh, adding some character to it. We'll see how the, this dries. All right. Saturday was productive. <clears throat> I'll be it a little bit slow enjoying the weekend a bit so the layout is just about done and now just cutting boards to size to uh, to finish the ends and then the uh, 
boards that are leaning up against the wall. That looks like that's going to be maybe a three inch cut. So I will be slicing that. Those boards last, last to go in. That will be uh, challenging. Always is. The last, last row is always a little challenging. And if memory serves, I think I had to yank up that uh, metal strip there to tuck boards under for the brick room. So not looking forward to that. That may slow things down. Everything will be cut to finish today. So I'll call it a Sunday finish in terms of laying the floor. We started last weekend and just took our time because of the concern for uh, the number of boards that were 83 inches. They were like, there's a total of, let's see, four, six, um, rows of boards per box. Four of those rows were the 83 inch and then a combination of 24, 28, 32 and 51s. Like two or three. Uh, like 151, a 32, 28, maybe a couple 24s or a couple 28s I think. But it's just a ridiculous number of uh, 83 inch boards that uh, you didn't want to have like just two seams in the middle of the floor at uh, 40 some odd inches. So it was uh, challenging. But I think uh, there's a nice blend. It breaks up. The eye doesn't, uh, there's no pattern, no repeating pattern. So it's uh, purposely random, thoughtfully random, which is why it took so much time. But it's getting there. So all the cuts will be done today. Final, final, and then uh, we'll uh, work on the baseboards. All right, methinks this was going to be a shorter video simply because this camera's in the way of me dealing with this threshold piece. Uh, and what I'm going to do, uh, as I think you saw previously in my test strip and then my previous run with this was, uh, this has a base coat of red sienna. Let that dry for a day. Then in between coats, a day apart. Uh, we have some Minwax stain, red mahogany. And then after that dried for, so geez, how many days? It's been a long time. Uh, then we've got a coat 
of wipe on poly and the reason I'm doing the wipe on poly in between finish is because now that the stain is on here and the stain is dry to the touch no tackiness no anything um, and by putting the poly coat on I'm now going to try and do some of this this uh, antiquing and aging this kind of thing to make it look less uniform it's just too uniform colors not bad uh, in the right light but it's just too uniform so I'm going to experiment with some cheesecloth some heavy cheesecloth this is actually heavier than I would prefer but um, I think my first go round is going to be with the chip brush where I'm just going to uh, do a little antiquing with my Van Dyke Brown Glaze. Love this stuff. And then after that is done and dried, I'll hit it again with a final coat of poly. So, uh, like I said, I don't have enough room on my bench here with my camera to do this live and do a good job. I think you've seen in other videos over the years when I try and do uh, antiquing and brown, Van Dyke Brown with the brush. So something's going to come out. But, uh, you know, I've got a couple... I think I'm going to use this as my example. So this will be kind of in front of me, hanging out here, so that uh, I'll try and get the desired result. And we'll be back uh, later. All right, so that was some freehand. I actually uh, didn't use the cheesecloth as I thought I would. But instead went old school and did the chip brush as I intended and then some fine lines to add stuff. And this is only the first coat. Uh, light doesn't do it justice, so maybe I'll shoot this again when, uh, when it dries. Back tomorrow. Alright, so this is dry now. This was my sample example. And this is how this turned out. So I'm going to probably do a second uh, run and try to get areas like this. See how it looks a little bit darker there so that it's, again, not so uniform. I'm trying to create, you know, stuff, stuff like this or right here or something like this. So that's today's goal. And then... Uh, this will be finished. I'll also probably darken up this edge so that the uh, orange reddish, same thing down here, so that that doesn't show through as much as it does. And then we're done with the threshold. Good evening, tubers. All right, this is done in terms of uh, the look, or rather the uh, antiquing slash character charactering that's what i'll call it i added character so the wood has what i would call blemish areas i will probably uh, take some uh, double lot steel wool to this i'll let it dry one more day and then i will uh, apply probably two coats of poly and then uh, also uh, double lot wool steel wool that to bring the shine down so it's more of a luster than a shine, but uh, I did want the protectant so that uh, scuffs and tears and everything would be eliminated so that uh, it keeps a, uh, a nice finish. But yeah, it came out pretty good. I'm uh, happy with this as compared to spending close to 100 bucks on an 8 foot section of which I only need less than 30 inches, I think 29 and 7 eighths inches. And uh, there's just no reason to spend that kind of money. Um, that's that. All right. Take care. All right. Last night was paint the old reusable baseboard. A little bit of trimming because the walls are not even. And then trimming this around that will seal that up nicely and then cutting but not yet priming or painting the new 
paint these boards and then cutting that cord around a little bit because of the height difference. And then doing a little shaping down there to finish it off. More to come. Good evening, folks. Uh, this is done. And unfortunately, these LED lights are so bright that it looks like, I don't know if you can tell the difference, there's no shine on here, but there's a sheen, if that makes any sense. So I dulled this down so you can see the sheen on here. Again, not a shine, but a sheen. And after two coats of poly, uh, and each coat was dulled down with some double lot steel wool, and, uh, and then wiped down. So this is done done. And I think it came out very nice. And uh, it will look good against the uh, the cuts uh, across the threshold so one video done baseboard at least that one is in trim is up so that line now looks cleaner so the wood, the natural pine, has to be primed and painted. And this painted baseboard needs to be uh, caulked so that the seams disappear. Put that one in quite nicely. In terms of fit, finish will be that small thin bead of caulk to fit the homegrown gotta cut some carpet better to uh, measure twice cut once because I can't put any carpet back in fact uh, I think this threshold came out uh, pretty good matches I don't think it'll draw attention to anyone as not being That one in as well. And then we have all the other baseboards cut, cut and sanded. And those again need to be primed and painted. We are so close to being done. Yeah. So today's effort will be caulking the seams and this is all done as well on the other side, but I wanted to focus on a tip. So this will be interesting. Uh, these are the nail gun holes. And I'm gonna show you by taking crayons, how easy it is. And hopefully uh, this will focus. Let me try and do well, tracking doesn't want to work. All right, so take a crayon. And the beauty of Crayola is if you get a box with like, you know, the 164, you're bound to find a color that will be pretty darn close to what you are trying to cover. And I learned this when I did the TV cabinet years ago. And I was trying to cover the nail holes. And that was a wooden, you know, stain. And the beauty of that is, you know, one of the wax sticks match. But you're paying like $10 or $12 for those wax sticks. And what is a crayon? A crayon is wax. So, obviously, let me change hands because this is where part of the magic comes in and yes it's a little messy so once you wipe those holes disappear and from a distance they are uh, they're goners so 
and then you just get rid of your wax shavings and you're good. That is uh, this morning's tip. Okay, the caulking line is done. This threshold will be what's left. And all good. The last corner. Okay, we are dunnage, 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 dunnage. Last finishing touch was putting the door back on after. Cutting the carpet padding, nailing, nail gunning this in, and then covering the uh, handful of holes. And that is, that is complete.